Hi, I'm Denise and welcome to this video. This beautiful garden, like the old house there, is divided into two. My neighbours rent this side and I rent the other side of the house and garden. This side. And last year I extended my garden plot to include the blue summer house and its garden with the two trees down to the pond. So I'm going to show you round because it needs some TLC, this part of the garden and the summer house especially. So I wanted to do a little video to start with just to show how, how it is at the moment and then show you, show you the transition from how it is now to how it will be. Okay, so I'm going to just come the other side of the camera and show you around. So there's lots of things that are well established, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit overgrown. Okay, there is the pond, some beautiful, I think, irises, but everything just needs cutting back. And we've got lots of these in the lawn as well. These are, I can't remember what these are, but these are an invasive species. So these will have to go. Pull all these out of the lawn, give it a trim. I've already started on this back bit. Swept up some of the holly leaves. It's a holly and that is a silver birch. Amazing colour of those. Bees are loving those. We've got a mock orange is covered in black aphids there. The back's a little bit out of control. There's some rhubarb over there, but the rest of it is just, just invasive whatnots. So this needs a tidy up. So it's got some nice plants here, but they're just just a little overrun with everything else. And let's take you inside. So we've got this covered area so I can shelter from the rain. We have the swan at the entrance. Space for some fairy lights. Just needs a bit of a tidy up. door needs a bit of oil. <laughs> but it's a good start and you can see you can see the rhubarb there and how overgrown that, that is outside. Um, but it just needs a bit of a clean a lick of paint. It's got shelves. And at the moment it's really just being used to house the the lawnmower and the strimmer. So I'm very excited to give this some TLC, make it into a meditation space. And I look forward to sharing the progress. And that will be on my newer YouTube channel called Heartful Living with Denise. My other one is Inner Peace with Denise that's been going for a while. That's my half of the garden. Lots and lots of poppies. <laughs> okay. Here is the before. Love, love, love. <sighs> okay, a little update. So, I have done my best to remove the, what's it called, hogweed, also known as cow's parsnip. This is almost all cow 
parsnip hogweed and it's really difficult to get out really difficult to get out um, I even got a new tool and I've dug and I've dug and I've dug and they've got the longest hat root that I think might go all the way to Australia so I've done my best but I can at least oh hello, <laughs> hello little bug I can I can at least now mow the lawn so that's what I'm going to do <laughs> with bugs in my face so that's a pile of mock mock orange so that I could get through there we go look Now, yes, rather a lot, rather a lot of prickly stuff as well. So I'm going to make a start on all this and see how we go. Welcome back. So I wanted to just give a little bit of an update. I've not been filming myself um, as I've been doing this. So I just wanted to give a little bit of an update as to how far I've got and what I've done. So I've created a pathway through to the back. Um, I've worked on this. I don't know, I haven't been timing it, but for a few hours the other day, given given the orange blossom a bit of a trim it needs a lot more but just enough enough to create some space I've made some discoveries like there's actually a path there <laughs> and everything was entangled around here around the front so there was there was blackberries there was brambles there's still still a bit of brambleage here, um, which I'm just about to dig out and I have seriously cut back Jasmine and I did that stage by stage I cut a little bit back I didn't because it came all the way out here this is this is why the geranium is so like forward like this um, because this one was so far forward so I was cutting back a little bit just to give some space to, to the geranium. And I kept being guided to cut back more, cut back more. And it just, it seemed so harsh, but that was, that was the guidance. And it's June, so I know it's gonna come back. Everything is a mess at the moment. There's stuff everywhere and this is this is kind of that stage where yeah I feel slightly deflated this morning because I realize how much I've got to do I have filled I would say three bin bags already um, and I haven't even haven't even started there which is another one or two bin bags I think but actually things are feeling a bit clearer and what I was going to say before so the brambles the blackberries were, were growing through it was all mixed up together and the energies just felt felt mixed up they felt um, tangled and I recognize the outer world and the inner so this outer world has been reflecting the inner so as I'm clearing this space of the garden I'm intending and I don't think you even have to intend it I think it just happens but I was consciously consciously intending too that as I'm clearing the space here that I'm clearing my inner space too um, there was lots of sticky weed lots of sticky weed growing around everything basically um, 
And interestingly, yesterday I was clearing some sticky weed and I didn't have long sleeves on. And it creates, it can create a bit of a rush on your body. And I'd made a plantain balm last year, put the plantain balm on and it really sorted it out. It stopped the itch, reduced the inflammation. Oh, I just spotted. I need to just see if I can, if I can zoom in. Can't see very well because the light is so bright. There's lords and ladies there. Do you see those things like peas? Um, those are beautiful flowers. They're like, like a fairy hat, the flower. And then the flower becomes these peas, peas, which are the seeds. And to me, it's such a strong indication of fairy presence. And although there's, there's definitely something to be said for things growing wild, it's almost like mother nature enjoys having some space where people can't really get in. Oh, this is another holly tree. I wondered what that was. Um, Mother Nature seems to enjoy that sometimes, to have some places that are, that are out of bounds. But it has just felt right here that it, that it wants to be cleared. And I think sometimes the fairy energy, it's, it's the creation of something beautiful which is that in such alignment with the energy of the fairies, creating beauty. This is some kind of rose. I did look it up the other day, but I can't remember. It's huge. There's so many rose trees and bushes here that I wasn't aware of. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there for I'm now. I'm going to have most of today is a bit of a rest day, but I wanted to do some work here before it gets too warm. It's still early. After, I'm not even sure if it's nine o'clock yet. So I just wanted to, um, to continue clearing the space, just working on it bit by bit. I may do some of this, but I might not. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I just wanted to, um, to say I got it I got it out it took a fair bit of digging I may have left a tiny bit in I'm not sure with blackberry if you know that tiny little amount will mean that it um, regrows time will tell but I'm rather chuffed that I got this out so some things are quite deep rooted the outer reflecting the inner as it does in life. So some things are quite deep rooted in the body. Some of our programs, some of our programming is deep, deep rooted. It can be ancestral. So we have to dig deep sometimes in order to, to uproot things, in order to change things, in order to reveal the beauty. So I mentioned before that I might have a bit of a rest day. When I say a rest day, there's actually a lot of inner work that I'll be doing. I am going to, I bought a hammock the other day, I'm going to show you in a second, if I don't forget. Um, so I'm going to lie in the hammock, so I'm getting distracted by the swifts, or are they swallows lying around? Swifts, I think. So when I, when I began on this awakening journey, I'm going to put this, <laughs> I don't think I need to be holding this any longer. I'm going to put that down in the pile, in the new pile and take this glove off. Okay, so where was I? I'm also quite hungry, so I need to go and eat. So when I started this, this journey, there was a lot of stuff going on in my body. I'd been a nurse for 20 years. Actually, at that point, 18, I think. 17. So there was a lot of stuff going on in my body, a lot of stuff in my, in my physical body. And that's why I started on this healing journey because I knew that my body needed it. And it still goes on, but I've actually made some huge, huge breakthroughs, especially this year, last year and this year. Um, I've released a lot of pain in my body. I've been releasing pain for so many years, for 20 years, but I'm actually starting to feel the benefits. 
what it's felt like up to now is that you release pain but that just allows the deeper pain to come up so you release pain and that just allows the deeper stuff to come up but I've noticed this year that there is actually a reduction in the pain in my body which I am delighted with I'm trying to be barefoot as much as I can at the moment um, there's there's a lot of space that I can be barefoot in because connecting our electrical bodies grounding our electrical bodies is of so much benefit um, so when I do when I say I have a rest day and I'm doing inner work I'm placing my hands on my body I'm seeing it's like my hands are my eyes and I'm seeing into the body and sometimes in that I might be shown situations in the past or I might be shown might even be past lives it might be stuff that's in our in our DNA so I'm going to be working with my body I'm going to be working particularly with my solar plexus and heart chakra and those in opening those further there's always a lot to release um, so that's what I'm going to be doing today we will see if I get tempted over to that corner <laughs> we will see but let me just I've been sleeping outside there's a tent just here I'm going to turn the camera around so that I can um, so that I can show you the hammock okay so there is there's my little hammock I just wanted to add something about the hammock and something I noticed the other day, so my, my body has found it difficult to relax. My body has been tense for so long that it finds it, I'm going to cancel that, that it was finding it difficult to relax. I would notice the areas of tension in my body. I've been doing a lot of fascia activation, recommending here the work of Erin Teets. Fascia Fix has been incredible for me. Activating my fascia, my body, and lots of other things as well but that's been a part of it but my body is starting to relax it's learning how to relax again after many many years of stress and of being in fight flight which applies to so many of us especially after the last two years if people weren't stressed before that they have been stressed generally in the last two years okay so what I want to say here is there was a time I was having a kinesiology session and beautiful lady doing the session was asking me do you know how to relax and I hadn't realized because I've been doing Reiki for a few years I thought I've been meditating for a few years I thought I knew how to relax I didn't and at that time I was living in a beautiful canvas cabin next to a pool true with the forest on the other side and I noticed one day I was in the pool and I had those um, noodle things you know to hold my body up and I, I realized wow my body has just relaxed my entire body has just relaxed here in the pool and I noticed the same thing on the hammock it felt like I was in a bath because water is often the place where you can relax and I noticed oops <laughs> such a professional I noticed in the hammock that my body was actually relaxed. The places that I still have quite a bit of work to do there are neck and shoulders because we hold so much tension there. When we're in fight flight, our shoulders raise and I think that is to protect the vulnerable neck because we have so many big blood vessels here. So this is one of the first places in our body that holds tension and by the same measure, it's probably one of the last places to let go of it. And I was feeling into that because I thought I'm not in water but I'm being held in the air, an element that I haven't connected with too much I've realised the last couple of weeks. I'm being held by the trees, by nature, by Gaia and I really really felt that. I've made my chai tea, I'm going to go and sip it on my hammock. I just wanted to add a little bit here about digging because I used the word digging when I was talking about getting the bramble out. I'm learning about not digging in your garden and the effect that digging can have, which is things like the bacteria 
the good soil at the top you're disturbing. There are some amazing videos out there by a man called Hugh Richards and his channel on YouTube talks about, it's a, it's a no digging garden that he has um, and it's regenerative as well. So I just wanted to mention that, that I, I dug as little as I could. That's, that's the little hole there um, from where the bramble came out. And what I was doing was, was kind of being as, trying to be as close to the root as I could. Started off, started off with this and I used the trowel a bit as well. Um, and really the hole is there for my hand to go down and grab the, grab the root. And what I'm finding when I do this, because I've always kind of just tugged roots of, of flowers, plants, weeds, whatever you want to call them, flowers that are in the wrong place, plants that are in the wrong place. Um, it occurred to me to try and use a circular motion in trying to get things out. And what I found was I started doing it anti-clockwise to start with, like just moving the plant. Actually, I'll, I'll show you here. I'm not actually trying to get this out, but let's just show you with this. So I was trying to get it out like this in a, in a clockwise, uh, sorry, anti-clockwise direction. And it wasn't really working and even just tugging some of the, some of the plants. And I do connect with the plant and explain what I'm asking the plant to do and why. And also working with the fairy realm and with Gaia herself. But what I found was if you then, if you actually, because I, I got nowhere doing it anti-clockwise, but as soon as I started doing it clockwise, I find things lift out a lot easier. So that's just a little, a little nugget that I've, I've found in my gardening explorations. So I made some good progress on this yesterday. I moved a lot of the um, sword, what are they called? These things, which is super easy to get out, which is good. Got one bramble out. There's still more down there. This is rhubarb, which is good for the compost. And in clearing away the weeds, also shown me that this side is going to need a cover I think just show me how rotten that is there and I think this tree that's growing at the back is going to need at least a trim it's growing in between the shed and the summer house so it's not really a very practical position for it but we'll see see how we go with that so there's one of the piles and I also cleared I cleared a lot of duckweed So the green stuff on the pond, the little leaves, those are duckweed. So I cleared all that out, <laughs> cut some of the, um, oh what are they called, those beautiful flowers that were hanging in the water, I've not, not got to those yet. Another little pile of duckweed there. And it was pretty clear yesterday, but already overnight <laughs> it's partially covered again oh my goodness but on the plus side I did see a frog this morning that was waiting for me on the step of the summer house when I came out to have my coffee there so rather delighted with that I'll try and stick a photo in so yeah still lots to do Okay, so we have just made some progress at the front of the summer house. 
I realized this beautiful, um, what are you called? Buplum, <laughs> Bupthalmum salicifolium was looking very sad. Um, the roots were too full for the pot, but I've just been waiting to get this space cleared. So I felt that was an emergency today because very wilty, very unhappy looking. So I've cleared away the, the sword, what's it called? Sword grass, whatever it is. Um, decided to get the whole lot out of there. It might well grow back and that's all right. Um, but I just felt to clear it for now. And I really wanted to put these bright yellow, hardy perennial flowers here at the doorway um, and, and get the foliage away from the step as well so that the step's not being damaged by the foliage. So I'm quite happy with this little corner now at the front of the summer house. And these little beauties are just starting. These look like daisies. These are just starting to uh, open up and the angel wings there, I think I'm gonna put there, but I just need to clear that space. That doesn't feel quite as urgent, so I should get that done quite soon. But yeah, happy with that, and look at this beauty. Happy in its boot. So it's looking much more homely now at the front of the summer house it was very overgrown it's much less overgrown now the plants we've got some new plants and the plants are happy so one of the first things i did on this side was trim the jasmine plant because that was hugely overgrown and i really trimmed it back a lot and that has grown back and it's even had a trim since then this was also very overgrown. That's a violet geranium. So that angel wings plant is a new one. That one's very happy there. We presently have lots of crocuses growing, which is beautiful. Little froggy. That's a new daisy looking plant. That was another one that kind of died back straight away, but it is starting to grow again. So that one's gonna come back next year. A little honoring of the fairies there in that corner. The lemon geranium is gonna go back inside for the winter because it doesn't like to have its roots frosty so that one I've kept in the pot but that's been brightening up the front. So that's the garden now cleared, tidied and loved again. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and share it along to anyone you feel might enjoy it. And keep an eye out for the heartful, tender loving care of the summer house and the pond videos.